All right, today we got Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 6. We are starting the Shibuya Incident Arc. You know I had to whip out the old OG OG t-shirt, hoping to see the boy Nanami go crazy. Remember, if you guys want the full, uncut, unedited version, check out the Patreon. Links are down below, like always. Please leave a like on this video and let me know your thoughts in that comment section down below. It really does help with that YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you guys immensely. I cannot wait any longer. Let's hop right into today's episode, JJK Season 2, Episode 6. Let's do it. All right, we are starting back in the present time. Very excited just to see these three again. You guys have no idea. Makes sense. Special grade is just its own thing, you know. First grades are the, the true leaders, you know. And this is just now reminding me, didn't we leave off season one with the majority of our people? Panda, maybe Maki. I'm pretty sure Maki was one of them. Inumaki might have already been ranked one. And then Yuji, Megumi, and Nobar. Didn't they all get promoted rank one at the very end with these guys? Mei and Toto? Hey, he's literally having them repeat right where we left off. The Maki, Panda, Megumi, Nobara, and Yuji. Best of friend, though. It leads so perfectly into the Shibuya incident. We need them. We've, they've had crazy rank up, crazy training during season one. We get to show it off in this season. Okay, so you need to not only be recommended by two first grade sorcerers, a company one or an equivalent sorcerer on your own mission, then at the results of that, you are assigned your own grade one mission, then at the results of that, you are finally chosen whether you're permitted, promoted, or you stay the same. They're about their shit. Okay, JJK. Mei Mei versus Toto in ping pong. Ooh, I'm loving the camera shots. Beautiful spin. Beautiful recovery. Ooh. <laughs> I love the camera work. I love it. The cinematography is so good. Damn, now I'm wondering what our grade uh, one mission is going to be. The ones who, okay. Shot us down real quick. And she beats him. It, he was all he was depressed after he heard the news. He can't be with his best friend. I get it. Come on, man. <laughs> so this girl we saw earlier is following Nobara. She knows Yuji. Uh huh. She's trying to rizz up my boy Yuji. I respect it. You shoot your shot, girl. Yuko is her name. Yeah. He's risen. So Ichiji's bringing Megumi back. I miss Ichiji too. Nobara's like, trust. You're good. They really don't know, but I love their inferring, you know. He does have, you know, talks about women with all and big asses, you know. I didn't even fucking put two and two together. <laughs> hey, come. Why? Come. Got it. He's like, oh, hey, what's up? What? Oh, instant recognition. 10 out of 10. I love how they do the widescreen little black bars when they do flashbacks. I was about to say, Yuji just doesn't seem like the type of guy who's uh, super into women like that, you know? He's got bigger priorities. He's thinking about his grandpa, his friends. I respect that. He's looking beyond the materialistic. Yeah. What's up with us getting this deep, nuanced slice of life? You know. <laughs> Maybe because JJK is so dark and full of so much death, but I'd be down for her to live a lovely life with someone, you know. Mmm, that's kind of deep. 
I'm just praying to Lord she's not like a Junpei style character. I will literally not watch the rest of this arc. Got your groceries, man. Carry my carry my shopping. <laughs> carry the rest. <laughs> Nobara low key is one of the funnier female characters in anime. I'm not joking. Her attitude, her jokes, the way she is so funny to me. Oh, Utahime, right? Yep, I remember Gojo telling her that. Okay. He's gonna handle the Tokyo side, she's doing the Kyoto side. I really do, especially after seeing her in the flashback, I trust her immensely. I know she's a real one. Okay. Well above the principle? I was about to say, what the fuck? Do we have a suspect in in theory or in thought? Yeah, 100%. Please don't say someone I like. No way. Is it Mekamaru or is it Miwa? I hope it's neither. I like Mekamaru and Miwa. But I could see Mekamaru doing something for his own interest, you know? Especially with the heavenly pact or the situation going on with his body, you know? Yeah. Oh, it is Mekamaru. Kokichi Muta. Like I said, it would make sense that he would be doing certain things for his own benefit just because of the situation which he's born with. He hates it so much, you know? I understand it to a certain degree, if that's why he's doing what he's doing. If he's doing what he's doing for any other reason, you know, thanks to his heavenly pact, I didn't even think about that at all. Damn. And his uh, amount of cursed energy too was insane due to his pack. Oh, this episode went from being all happy, fun, slice of life, I'm loving it, to now it's like, we're getting kind of serious. Fake door, fake trail. It's gonna be the curse users, Mahito Ghetto. I love that transition. How, you know, we thought it was Utahime and the rest of them. I can't believe Mekamaru is a rat. Yep, that's what it was for his own benefit, you know. It makes sense. I don't think they would actually uphold that, like they're gonna kill him, but. So Mekamaru didn't want his fellow Kyoto schoolmates to be hurt. Understandable. True. You must uphold them, otherwise you'll be the one hurting. Like that. Sukuna said that in season one too. If we make a pact, especially if I'm the one initiating the pact with you, I'll be hurt a lot by breaking it. Is he actually gonna fix Mekamaru's body? Oh, oh my god! I've seen him in art! Images! That's Mekamaru! I've s I had no idea. Holy shit, he's got a real body now. Like, he said he would give up his cursed energy in a heartbeat to have a normal body. And now he has the best of both worlds. And now they're gonna fight. We kill him after we, after we fix him. He's got multiple puppets with a body fresh. He's, it reminds me of Robot from fucking Invincible, right? When he gets his new body. And he's just so strong. The mace. I love it. I love his idle transfiguration ability. It's so creative. I did say his cursed energy is incredible. His literal only downside and flaw was his physical body. Don't tell me this is don't tell me this is a puppet. Don't tell me this is a puppet. I'll be butthurt. I'll be butthurt. I don't get the English sub for that. I don't know what that means. Cool. 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 So we're watching Gundam now. 
Gurren Lagan. Russian Code Geass? Am I confused? Oh, he wants Gojo. Gojo's his win condition. Ooh. Are these all videos of all... Yes, they are. Throughout Season 1. Okay. Mekamaru, aka Muta, fully unleashed. Thinking about Miwa. One of the nicest people to him. 17... He's spending a year full of built-up cursed energy? Bruh. There's no way the episode's already over. There's no way. Talk about a first episode of an arc. You can totally tell it's a transitional episode. It's getting us into the Shibuya arc. But even so, it was amazing. I... The only thing I'm actually curious, like, I'm not really curious about many of the things because I understand where they played in, their, in terms of the plot, this, that, and the third. The only thing I'm very curious about, especially due to my past experiences with Jujutsu Kaisen, is Miss Yuko. Yuji's friend, old friend, who they showed a very lovely flashback for. It totally was not necessary to show that or even put it in the manga. That gets me thinking is it going to be a little bit deeper than just the surface level interaction between them right there and i could be totally incorrect but if i had to guess and like i said it could be totally incorrect but would it not be typical inspirational main characterness especially in jjk for her to die just like junpei and just have yuta uh or not yuta, have fucking uh yuji just go crazy i know it's already been done especially with junpei but i just don't know there's not a chance Yuji ends up with her and they get together. So cross that off. There's not a chance anything in the show is going to be happy and fun. So we can cross that off. So what does that leave? She gets brutally murdered. But overall, episode was fantastic. I have most definitely seen art of Mechamaru outside of his Mechamaru ness thing. And I know his Heavenly Pact was he has puppet control over a, uh, an expansive range and just immense sorcery cursed energy at the cost of his bodily displeasure like it would this, the, the moonlight was too rough it would burn him this that and the third i remember he said that something like that but i thoroughly enjoy that plot aspect that he was the mole the entire time but to get his own body so then hope and i don't know even afterwards if he's going to be back on our side he was just said he was going to use gojo as like a fail safe win condition to protect him right there but that could be he could you know so i'm very curious and even uh, Mahito and Ghetto aren't like cool with him. Like they're like, all right, time to kill him. Now let's do the pack first, then we kill him. I love the play on packs and typical anime shonen tropes, especially throughout season one when Nanami and everyone would say, "Hey, if I tell you my power, it's a pact with myself, so it makes it more amplified and more strong." Which is just an anime thing. They just want to tell you the pa us, us, the audience. They want to tell us the powers, but it makes no sense to tell your enemy your power. But in this, it makes it makes sense. That's why. Uh, I know I'm ranting, I know I'm glazing on JJK a little bit, but let me say JJK is thoroughly impressing me, cinematography-wise, visuals, audio, characters, story, everything. So, I'm hella excited for next week. I cannot wait. Hopefully you guys are as well. If you are, please leave a like on this video. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe, click that bell. Other than that, have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace out.